The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Lesson 5 of your Distance Learning Program for Geology Upper 6 Science with Kenneth Yosimbom. During Lesson 4, we had an assignment. We shall proceed to correct the assignment. Now, our assignment were given a portion of the stratigraphic column to observe at home, taking note of the Phanerozoic, which is an aeon, then the Paleozoic, that is the lower upper portion, then with note W, X, Y, Z letters. We are required to observe and answer those questions. One, letters W, X, Y, and Z represent. Then number two, life forms of trilobites were common in which geologic time? So the first answer require that we should say what letters W, X, Y, and Z represent. So the letters, they represent W, Mesozoic, which is an era. Then X, Jurassic, which should be a period. Then Y, Carboniferous, which is also a period. Z, Silurian, which is also a period. So in that block, the letters X, uh, W, X, Y, and Z can be separated into two, era and period, with X, Y, Z making our period, Y, W, the, uh, the, the, the era. Now another way of putting it would have been state their exact ages in terms of millions of years. If that happened, when you are stating for the era, know that you are stating you are going to give an age range and then for the different periods to give their specific ages. Then part two of the question require for us to give, the, uh, uh, the, uh, to say when the life forms of trilobites commonly occur, that is to give their geologic time. And from our lesson four, we can say it with a lot of precision that it occurred in Cambrian. Remember that the appearance of trilobites in Cambrian marked the beginning of fossilization, the reason for which any material that was formed before Cambrian or rock formations before Cambrian are referred to as Precambrian and they are azoi, meaning that they lack fossils. We are still under the topic stratigraphy. Today we shall be emphasizing on dating. So our lesson 5 is titled Dating 1. We will have different lessons in dating. About 8 of them. We we'll begin with the first which is Dating 1. That will have to do with definition. In our lesson overview, we shall look at lesson uh, objectives, we shall look at the prerequisites, 
real life situation, learning activities, exercises. We shall end our lesson with assignment. Today, you should or you will be able to define dating. You will also be able to state, define, and describe types of dating. Remember that we are talking about dating in geology. To better understand this lesson, we must be versed with the definition of stratigraphy and stratification. Remember we said stratigraphy is the study of stratified rocks of the cross. And stratification involves the processes that are uh, involved in the formation of strata. Then branches of stratigraphy, we said they involve little stratigraphy, bio stratigraphy, and chrono stratigraphy. And the principles of stratigraphy involve the, the, the principle of uniformity in the then uh, 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 actualism, superposition, cross cutting relationship, original horizontality, and then the geologic time scale. With this information, we will have a better understanding of how to date information in geology. Now, a quarry owner in Penja leaves a cliff divided into rock layers after extracting at a depth of 100 meters. Each rock layer, he observes, that a difference in grain sizes, thickness, and rock color. As you can see in this uh, photo of the quarry cliff, you can see layering. You can also realize the fact that there is color variation, have reddish brown, and then you have um, you have dark. Then with grain sizes, you can realize that there is a portion that is massive and another portion that is chaffy. Now, the problem in this uh, situation scientifically is which concepts are necessary to explore the geology of this area if you were there during field work. We shall look at some possible hypotheses. The fact that the rock properties and their temporal as well as spatial distribution can be considered as a way to explore the geology of this area as a, as a hypothesis. Then, the denudational geology of the area. That is, how the materials have been worn out under the effect of denudational processes. Then, the economic benefits of the materials. Since it is a quarry, they have been extracting. Is it beneficial? Now, as we go through our lesson, we shall look at which of the hypotheses is uh, uh, possibly going to help us understand how to ex uh, exploit the geology of this area, especially if it is during field work. Move to the first part of our lesson, that is dating. You shall observe this uh, rock formations that have been captured through outcrop 1, outcrop 2, outcrop 3, and outcrop 4. You observe and deduce the dynastic elements. If you observe outcrop 1, you will realize that, or oh, generally in all the outcrops, they are layered. And specifically, each layer has fossils. While some outcrop, like outcrop 1, has some layers not represented or without fossils. This guides us to the definition of dating. Dating in geology is the study of time intervals on a geological scale. Remember that the base is geology. So it will, if we talk dating, it will 
involve time intervals, geologically centered or on a geological scale. Therefore, geologic dating will simply be a technique of using uh, that is used to determine the age of rocks as well as it could be events. When we add events, when we add other elements other, uh, that are geologically related, we now refer to that dating as geochronology. So geochronology in general, if you look at geo, geo is, uh, uh, is F, and then chronology, other. Therefore, geochronology is the science of determining the age, the age of rocks, fossils, and sediments. Remember that that now includes geologic materials with fluids excluded. Now look at types of geologic dating. We have relative dating and absolute dating. We shall examine each and every one of them gradually. We begin with relative dating. Relative dating is a dating method or dating type that gives approximate ages of rocks. Here, we don't need to know the ages uh, specifically. We just know approximate, uh, approximate ages because it has to go with comparison. You compare which uh, event came first and which event came last. That is relative dating. Or you have geologic formations and you compare when uh, you compare the two formations and see how the materials were laid down, beginning with which of them. Then, in relative dating again, it gives us which rock is older or which rock is younger. And this is based on some specific principles of uh, stratigraphy. That is the principle of, uh, or the law of superposition, which states that if material is laid down and nothing has happened with it, or there have not been distractions, then the material that is laid down first should be older, and that which is laid down lastly should be younger. We also have the way of criteria strategy or technique which can help us to know which rocks are older and which ones are younger. So with these two principles, we shall develop the relative dating method. Remember that these two principles are very essential as far as relative dating of rocks are concerned. Remember that in relative dating, we don't give exact ages of rocks. We only give approximate ages using terms like old, young, first, last, and we then give a train of the order of the events. Now, look at methods of relative dating of rocks. To relatively date rocks, number one, we can use the paleontological method. That is, the law of faunal succession. The law of faunal succession has to do with the edges of strata, which can help us to identify the fossils that they contain. Now, when we know the different strata, and we know the fossils that are involved or that are, uh, that are contained within each layer, it can help us to draw a conclusion as to which of them was laid down first and which of them came last. Now look at our geologic formation again. The sequence of beds divided into small sections of zones with each zone characterized by particular fossil. Look at uh, uh, outcrop one. The layering is there and then you have the different fossils. This means that if, uh, if uh, the bed at the base was laid down first, and we have fossils there, then that fossil should automatically be older than the one that was laid down in the third layer. 
the same, you can take the same comparison with Acro 4. The fossil at the base should be older than the fossil at the top. Relatively, that is how dating is done with the help of fossil information. Examples. Gratolites in Ordovician and Silurian. Now, you will expect that since Gratolite formation began in Ordovician and up to Silurian, the ones that were fossilized during uh, the Ordovician should be younger or should be older than the ones that are fossilized in Silurian formation. That is the way to relatively bring out the ages of rocks. Also, bivalves are zone fossils in the tertiary rocks. Note should be taken here that bivalves, we are only taking them as zone fossils in the tertiary, not limiting the formation or the fossilization of bivalves only to the tertiary. So, bivalves in uh, uh, as zone fossils in the tertiary rocks. Remember that tertiary is partitioned into uh, uh, palogene and neogene. So the ones that would have been formed at palogene should be older than the ones at uh, uh, the neogene. In other words, we could still say lower tertiary and upper tertiary, meaning that lower tertiary formations will have older fossils than upper uh, uh, tertiary formation uh, 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 fossils. Beds are relatively dated based on their fossil content. Look at this example. Beds with graptolites and trilobites will be older than those with bivalves. Remember that we are just saying that bivalves are were zone fossils in the tertiary. Now, graptolites are Ordovician and Silurian, while trilobites are Cambrian. So, you will realize that trilobites will automatically be older. And where you find them occurring in formations, the formations also should be older as compared to uh, bivalves that are tertiary based on characterizing them as zone fossils. They should automatically be uh, younger if you have a formation with uh, an outcrop with a comparison of graptolites, trilobites, and bivalves. Relatively, we will be right in saying that trilobites are older than bivalves. Rock layers with zone fossils enable easy determination of their original orientation. By orientation here we mean that, you know, if the material has been distracted, we will understand. If it has not been distracted, then the fossils that are laid below are older than the ones that are above. For example, rock layer containing goniatite should be older than the rock layer containing ammonites. All of them are common groups of are in the common group of fossils, but goniatite will appear in formations older than uh, uh, ammonites. Certain shear types lay on the sea surface in their more stable uh, orientation, which means that uh, when you take the case of uh, uh, productus or uh, productites, bra uh, brachiopods, which will have, if you compare their, their, their appearance on the sea floor, you will realize that they are convex or they, are, they, they, they put on a convex surface which is facing upward. That already just helps us to use the criteria or the technique of way up criteria to know that below will be older and then in the convexing direction should be younger. Then evolutional changes that is occurring within a fossil group can also be used to determine the direction of younging. That is the direction where the fossils are older and to where they are younger. For example, you have rocks with pendant forms are older than those with scandent forms. Meaning that the pendant form 
fossils should have been formed in formations that were older than those with standard forms. Then trace fossils, those are fossil impressions. They will most likely be found in sedimentary rocks. Not just all kinds of sedimentary rocks, but most likely fine grain sedimentary rocks. These structures are most likely on soft so uh, surface, especially during formation. Therefore, they will help us to know the way up. For example, footprints and wound burrows are preserved as the sediments dry up and they will indicate direction of uh, uh, younger beds. Therefore, when, when we see footprints, we should know that it should be the top and beneath the, the footprints should be the base and base will be older while top is younger. The use of some major events Major events like folding and faulting, as well as jointing. You have folding events. Overlying or overlaying unfolded beds are most likely to be younger than the underlying folded beds. Why the process of folding is younger than the youngest bed affected? In other words, we are saying that folding cannot occur in space. It takes place within a geologic formation. So the succession has to be laid down. Then compressional events come in to bend and twist the materials. Therefore, the compressional events will most likely result to folding, which should be younger than the formations in which they are formed. And then the folded formation should be, uh, should be younger than or should be the youngest than the un unaffected uh, uh, bed. Then faulting and jointing events. In faulting and jointing events, they also take place within rock formation or succession. So they will not occur in space. Therefore, where the uh, rocks are faulted and jointed, they should be uh, uh, presenting information to prove that they should be younger than the formation in which they are occurring. So faults and joints are always younger than the rocks that they are affecting. We also have igneous structures like dikes or like intrusions. For example, a dike will be younger than the intrusion in which it is, uh, uh, than the geologic formation in which it is occurring. We have uh, uh, vesicles in lava flows. Vesicles are simply those uh, 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 holes on the rock that are, or are pore spaces that are allowed as a result of escape of gases that were trapped during the process of uh, cooling. So when we see vesicles, automatically the vesicles should be younger because they should have been formed after the cooling process by escape of gases. Also, pillow lavas. Pillow lavas, they will have rounded tops and uh, uh, tapering lower surfaces. So the rounded tops will be the younger portion, while the tapering base should be the older portion. We have the process of metamorphism. Metamorphism occurs within rocks. And metamorphism here is what? Change in form. The change in form cannot happen in space. It must happen within a rock body. Therefore, the onset of metamorphism is younger than the beds affected and older than the rocks not affected by the metamorphic process or by the metamorphism. Metamorphic rocks, therefore, should be younger than the unmetamorphosed country rocks. And then, recrystallized country rock is younger than the non-recrystallized country rock. This picture is big when we look at uh, 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 metamorphic aureoles or contact aureoles where we have baked and chilled margins. The chilled margin portion of the intrusion and then the baked margin uh, portion of the country rock. Automatically, that process should be happening on the country rock, which should be older than the metamorphism 
it serves. Now recall that dating is the use of rocks to determine the order of events in the history of the egg. Or in general, it is the study of time intervals from a geologic point of view or in a geologic scale. And that geologic dating is a technique used to determine the age of rocks. Also, geochronology is the science of determining the age of rocks, fossils, and sediments. If we must add geologic events in general, then dating methods will include relative and absolute dating. Look at some exercises. A paleontologist in the field observed a sequence of layered rocks. Two of the rock layers contain goniatites and ammonites. What is the relative age of the layered rocks? Remember, goniatites and ammonites are the same fossil groups, but they occur at different levels of formation. So A, the rock layer with goniatite is older. B, the rock layer with goniatite is younger. C, the rock layer with goniatite is the same age with that of ammonite. D, the rock layer with goniatite was deposited after. The correct answer is A. The rock layer with goniatite is older than that with uh, ammonites because goniatites are formed first than the ammonites. Number two, footprints and worm burrows are usually found at A, base of the beds, B, top of the beds, C, middle of the beds, D, contact of the beds. The correct answer is B, they are found at the top of the beds to help us indicate the Jungian direction. Number three, the subdividing of rocks into aeon, era, period, Epoch is based on, remember that this question again is sending us back to geologic time scale. Remember that relative and uh, absolute dating should be structured within the geologic time scale frame. One, rock sequence markers. Two, use of unconformities. Three, breaks in deposition process. The correct answer is C. Subdivision of rocks into aeon, era, period, epoch is based on sequence markers, use of unconformities, breaks in deposition process. Number four, in the contact between folded and unfolded beds, the unfolded beds are, again, in the contact between folded and unfolded beds, the unfolded beds are A, older, B, younger, C, ancient, D, earliest. Correct answer is uh, uh, B, in contacts between folded and unfolded beds. The unfolded beds are younger. Now, as our assignment, we are going to do an observation of the portion of geologic formation. You shall take note of the way the numbering is done. Each number there represents a geologic event. After observing that, you shall answer this question. Referring to the portion of the geologic column above, one, give the relative ages of the features numbered one, two, three, and four. Then, number two, deduce the stratigraphic principles shown. Remember that we have done a lesson on the different principles of stratigraphy. 
there are texts that are official that we can use at home to help or to assist us do our assignment. We have advanced level geology, fundamentals of geology, we have the principles of geology and the Penguin Dictionary of Geology. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on dating two, which will continue the interpretation of the Earth history using relative dating methods. See you in our next class. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndom, esa kina bia jinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injo biayen 